Awesome. Thanks for uh, meeting with us, Keith. <laughs> It's good to finally meet you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Hey, yeah so well. congratulations. Pretty Thank exciting. You. you got yeah, a nice really place. Good. Thank you. Yeah, we've been saving up for a while and uh, just the right place at the right time came up and we decided to go for it. So um, it's been a whirlwind since uh, November when we bought it. We've been, um, we're doing a ton of work on the inside of the house, but now finally we get to get our hands in the dirt and start oh, working the property. So. It's fun. Is it warm where you are? It's like 30 degrees here. Yeah. yeah. 27 today. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what the heck? That's crazy. It's, oh, awesome. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I did get a chance to read your email. Let me just pull okay. it up. I like that you're going to, you know, think about doing the like geothermal, like the, the harder to do stuff before you start putting blocking yourself in essentially yeah exactly. Um, do you know what kind of geothermal you want to do because there's not, a bunch of different types yeah not 100 percent yet we're gonna we're gonna get some quotes first from some local companies and get their input um okay. i don't know if it'll be the well type or the yeah. uh like the inline segments okay yeah because i was gonna say that uh if just so basically how i'll how i'll do this like you know soft consultation yeah. is um, I'll, I'll just kind of say, you know, if it was my property, what would I do? And then I can run some ideas by you. And then, right. um, you know, you can modify it by things that you want on your property. Just let me know. Like I have a general idea okay. of stuff you want. Um, if it was me and I had a fresh blank slate, I would definitely uh, be put. Oh, sorry for the dogs. The dogs are going to. That's right. Right. <laughs> um, I would definitely personally put in a pond even if i just hand dug it um you're on sand so i would definitely recommend a pond liner okay i know like a lot of permies would want to like delay it uh you know and do more like natural things but like you don't have that much room and if you start doing like geothermal with a pond and then you start um like getting leaks and having to dig it's just it is a total nightmare that can be solved for like a thousand dollars with a giant pond liner okay so i you know that's what i would do um i'll show you can i wonder can i screen share this and the reason i'm bringing up the pond is that if you're doing geothermal the best what like the best method is if you've got it connected to water so if yeah. you've got it running through the outside of a pond or even directly in the pond uh, but then you got to get a contractor that can actually like execute that properly. Yeah. We have a friend who just installed the uh, geothermal heat pumps in their pond. It's oh yeah. Perfect. Really, really well. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what I would do a hundred percent, especially like where you are, you know, you're like, uh, you're North of me. You're probably like zone, I think, uh, probably four zone three, yeah. four. Um, yeah, I would definitely do I would definitely do a pond myself. What kind of size would, would you think would be? So um, I'll pull up. Okay. So they, can, can you see this? Yep. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is just what I had, you know, rough sketched. Um, so in terms of, you know, when I look at a property, the first things I look at are like, yeah, it's all in the permaculture designer handbook too. It's not like this is my stuff. This is just, you know, um, good practice from a, a lot of smarter people than me yeah. is, you know, you look at like site access, you look at, can you actually get to places, uh, infrastructure, where are you going to build your house? Where are you going to build, um, you know, large out buildings like uh, sheds and stables, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then you want to look at um, what the lay of the land is telling you, uh, you know, and that kind of comes into play with all the other things. Like, you know, where does the land tell me that it wants the house, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and, and that goes for like earthworks, like swales, ponds, dams, that kind of thing. Yeah. So for your property, it's actually, there's a slight slope. It looks like from, um, can you see my mouse when I move it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like basically, you know, you've got a fully graded property. This would have been graded by the builder. Yeah. So it looks like it, it, it flows from here down to this side and then um, also kind of here towards the ditches. Yeah. And then yeah. there's a culvert right here that I guess... Uh, the rainwater catchment goes down here and then runs down into this ditch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think, I think the water flows are essentially like off your house onto the driveway, the driveway to the culverts yeah. here on your side of the house. It's going to flow to there. It's going to flow to here and down and out. And then here it's going to generally flow across. 
okay. and then down and out and then here i'm not sure exactly what's going on here but I, it looks like it's pretty much still going this way flowing out so the slope is like the property is not huge enough where a small grade would make a lot of sense to do a very long shallow wide um swale also you've got neighbors here who um they don't have a ton of grass area they're not growing corn um, or soybeans or anything like that where you would want to intercept the flow of water from their property and then stop it in a swale run it into like a wetland filter or something to okay. purify any kind of um, herbicide or, or pesticide that they're spraying so for you you don't have to necessarily protect against that and this whole vegetative area is going to naturally kind of filter out any flow through by itself so this is that, that's great because basically what you would want to do is create a swale right at the top of your land with a pond at the top of your land and then a swale right at the bottom of your land with a pond that way you're stopping and holding any water coming in and then you're also stopping and preventing any nutrient flow out okay um for you what i would what i would suggest is um so this is south side and this is the north side. So yeah. all the green areas are like your MVP areas. These are going to be your best spots to grow anything. Okay. Um, I would suggest, you know, right near the house, this is where you do both composting and any kind of annual gardens that you want to do, like raised beds or anything like that. So that's um, that's kind of where the septic field is, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So basically as, as close to the house as you can get. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could put raised beds on the septic field, just yeah. make sure you know where you, your pump outs are and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's close. Basically, you want your annual stuff that you're going to be going to like every single day to get, you know, lettuce or whatever for, for yeah. dinners. You want to get that as close to the house as possible and then in as good of a sun area as possible. Yeah. We're so, kind of thinking the front yard for that as well. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah for sure. This is. That's MVP. Yeah, that, that's a yeah. great area here if, if you're okay with building out in the front as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I probably should have. Yeah, so I would say that um, compost, I would say in the back okay. or somewhere around here, wherever ease of access makes sense yeah. for you to do it. Okay. And far enough away from your house in case you get any kind of like, you know, rodents or anything like that going through. You don't want to have that really close to your house, especially in the cold and in you know, where they yeah. be searching for ways to get into the house from there so uh this could be a good area here uh for that and then back here could be a good area but you can put pick wherever you want generally okay. like out of sight out like out of sight of the neighbors is a good idea um okay so i was gonna say a pond here is really good because it's on the north side of this bunch of uh trees yeah so you would have to figure out uh like as you're digging how close you want to get to some of these uh, is all of this staying it looks like a bunch of pine and spruce yeah i think so gone. um i think yeah i think the big one that looks dead in the picture there that one's gone uh, okay right now but there's uh the big spruce is still there and then like i think like only three kind of scraggly looking ones yeah of the green ones left okay yeah those ones don't provide too much shade yeah well, and that's what i was gonna say is if you don't necessarily hate them, I always like keeping trees up yeah. because it gives you a bit of shade. It gives trees, you know, as the sun moves throughout the day, you know, especially young plantings, it gives them a little bit of a break yeah. um, depending on where the sun is that day. Uh, yeah. So I would say if you were to do a pond, I would do it here and I would run the ge geothermal out to that. Okay. That's what I would personally do. The other option would be if you're not doing a pond geothermal, if you're just doing a deep, straight down then it could go anywhere except the yeah. septic obviously so that's you know no uh limitation and then other than that if you're doing just like a long uh geothermal i think you got to go about six feet down just so you know you gotta have like one pipe four feet one pipe pipe uh, six feet okay and then just run it as far as possible essentially you want to get as much thermal um cooling or warming as possible so you, yeah. you just want to go as far as possible so you could even just like go all the way down here if you wanted it back and you could pr price it out based on the contractor that did it yeah but uh yeah knowing where that is then you would probably put in you know some kind of food forest strips however you want to necessarily walk through your land i was thinking something like this where 
you've got the pond here for the geothermal that comes out, then you build a fire pit on top of the geothermal and yeah. any kind of um, seating or outdoor spaces that you want kind of so that you know where the geothermal pipes are not to dig there or anything. Yeah. They're pretty far down, like six, six feet, but you never know down the road, you want to put in a micro pond and you forget where stuff is. Yeah. So I always like to kind of like design in, you know, seating areas on top of areas that I can't dig. And then it's also just kind of on the north side of this. So that'll keep this pond from heating up too crazy in the summertime and getting yeah. kind of algae and, and disgusting. And then you could probably lower how much oxygenation you need in the pond if it's in a shady spot. So this could be a good spot for a pond. Okay. And then it's also not taking a valuable, um, a valuable tree space. And then any sun that does hit it is kind of coming here. It'll bounce off that. And then you'll get this real microclimate here in the winter time of like solar reflection into stuff. So you could do like a rock wall to kind of absorb that heat. And then that oh, cool. could be areas where you push zone on, you know, if you want to try peaches up near Ottawa, like, you know, anything like okay. that, you could do a whole bunch of rocks on the backside of this pond here. And then you could do like a nice little microclimate there. That could be a good area because it's also sheltered from the north wind here. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice little sweet spot. Well, that's where we could put the greenhouse to later on, maybe. Yeah. 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 Greenhouse, like, yeah, anywhere that you got solar exposure is pretty good. So, okay, like, so you... yeah, it's so sandy, our soil, that, um, like, even during, like, really, really hard rains, there's no water that runs on the property. It all just drains. Okay. Um, so that might be a problem, I'm thinking, with the pond to keep it full in the summer. Yes, it could be. Yeah, because you, you won't, I mean, you could run your roof water runoff into it. Yeah. Um, that would pretty much be the only thing. Um, garage roof? <laughs> yeah, the garage roof, too, yeah. Yeah, you could put the greenhouse there run that into it yeah and then if it's lined you're only dealing with evaporation true yeah it might not it might not be that bad but for example for my pond um we run maybe so it's just this side of the house so we run maybe uh a third of the total roof area into the pond yeah um and then i've got to top it up maybe once a week maybe uh run the hose for about 30 minutes or so but my water's all like free from the artesian wall so i don't really care yeah like, it's just going to flow down the back of my property anyway i just kind of tap into it and pull some off nice um but i think you're probably on city water uh, no we have a well oh you have a well okay yeah. okay so that's good so you have free water like you know free water as long yeah. as you don't run through it do you, do you know how deep the well is uh, I have this report, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Have you talked to any of the neighbors if the well's gone dry in the last couple of years? Um, no one said the well's gone dry. I know a bunch of neighbors have tapped into city water, so the demand on the water's a lot less now. Okay. Um, so that could be good or bad. I mean, yeah, better yeah. than it was, but it could be they're tapping into the city water for a reason. For a reason, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you'll have, yeah, so you'll have free, free top up. Um, another thing you could really think about doing is ways that you can catch any kind of um, snow in the, in the winter time. So you get a huge fill up in the, in the spring, at least that'll yeah. charge you up. So you can put like snow fencing in here. Um, you said you wanted a site barrier as well. Yeah, we're bushes. thinking like a dead hedge or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So for it, like, if you want full site, you got to go obviously like a evergreen cedar is okay. just i mean like i don't really like cedar necessarily but for for a hedge i've tried a whole bunch of different hedges and yeah. i'm probably gonna plant a bunch of cedars this year oh yeah just for, for the visuals just because it just works so well they grow so easily here and yeah. then they actually like block the vision all year not just in the spring yeah we um we just had a big storm here and so we've been going around collecting all logs and tree limbs and all sorts of stuff um and we're gonna be doing you doing a he dead hedge we think so just like putting up posts and then running dead material through the middle of it okay. and weaving it um yeah. and then maybe growing beans or something over top of it i know okay. it's prettier yeah. yeah 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 have you have you seen um out of lakers videos on his 
on his I've thing. Seen, I've seen him talk about it once or twice there. Yeah. Okay. Definitely yeah. check his stuff out. Like he, he does miscanthus grass and okay. um, uh, he like coppices plants at different heights. Let me, uh, I can probably pull it up real quick just while we're talking about other stuff. Yeah. His, his videos on his front living wall are just probably the best on the internet. Awesome. Like it's, it's one of the things that actually got me into, uh, into permaculture. Cause I just thought this is just pretty <laughs> wild. This guy, yeah, this is a good one. Okay. So I'll email you this. Okay, Definitely thanks. make sure you check that out. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. So let's just see. I also have like a little questionnaire that we can run through. Oh, um, you don't have to necessarily answer it now, but it'll give you some ideas of questions that, uh, you, you know, you might think of. Okay, so just like back to your original email, you said uh, you want fruit trees, lots of berry bushes, annual bed, pathways to the stop sign and mailbox. So let me just yeah. double check. That's just to the front of the road? Yeah. So it's pretty oh, and the mailboxes are here, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it would run right along that green line. Okay. On the inside of it, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, the best pathway is like one where you've got trees and food forests on either side. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so something like this could work. You could just uh, yeah, notch a hole out there if it's it, yeah, whatever's the easiest way to get through. Yeah, that'd be okay. perfect. Yeah. Compost area. Oh yeah, that's right. Outdoor rink. Outdoor rink. Yeah, yeah, that's the fun one. And that's a so what size rink? Because uh, I know people who build like full full size hockey regulation rinks, and that would be incredible. But I I don't think I want to sacrifice the. The area for that but i was um, gonna say that's like most of your backyard <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but probably like about the size of the the house if you or the, yeah about the size of the house or a little bit smaller than that this year i made it um just on the north side of the house yeah like here uh, yeah exactly right there yeah it's a good spot that's kind of where i was thinking yeah it's it... nice and flat yeah um so yeah, I was kind of thinking there, but also kind of where the pond is, kind of north of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the idea I was thinking of um, was to have kind of boards up with uh, fencing on it to, to get keep pests out and have it as an annual bed in the summer. And then in the winter, just pack the snow on top of it and, and put the ice on top of that. Yeah. What would you think of that? Do you think that's doable? I, well, so I've never done a rink myself, okay. so I, I don't know how much it compresses down with the weight or anything like yeah. that. Like, I know that the grading has got to be pretty good or else it's really annoying to flood. Yeah. Um, I mean, worst case, it just means that you're deeper in one corner. Um, exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it could probably work. I don't really see any reason why it, it necessarily wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, like I know my, my brother-in-law basically like concreted out a pad and like, oh, nice. went like full out because he'd been running it for a while. And then when he's like, he was just sick of it, always shifting and it being really annoying to like fill and clean off. And then the ice would get funny yeah. as like winds were coming. And yeah, he, he said that leveling it out made a big difference. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that's a good spot because in terms of gardening space, the north side of that house, like there's shade on the picture, yeah, right there, and that's like middle of the day. It looks like so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not a great growing area. Plus, then it's close to the house, which is ideal for the rink and for flooding and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, the other thing you could do is if you don't switch it into a garden bed, is you could switch it into like a picnic table area, or yeah, that's I, true. I don't know what else. What else you want to do for like outside infrastructure, like yeah. Something kids swings stuff like that in the summertime do you have do you have kids uh we just found out we're expecting so. oh okay good. <laughs> oh good so you're first yeah, yeah. okay That's good. Four. a lot to do before then yeah. oh my goodness yeah you guys are gonna be busy yeah yeah well we had our first we uh we moved because we so we got married we moved we started new jobs and had a kid like all in the same time wow so <laughs> it was it was pretty intense yeah yeah we got married uh, in july got and then job. both got new jobs and then yeah. just moved. got this new house yeah <laughs> i mean i guess it's probably pretty typical yeah yeah that's good
Well, I mean, it's it's fantastic that you guys are both into this. Like, yeah, uh, that is just such a such a blessing that you guys are both really excited about the same things here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, we were living at another house that was uh, semi detached, and it was like there wasn't much garden area at all. But we turned all the grass into garden. And, That's right, you said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our neighbors well, thought we were a little crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because at first, I, that's what I read. Like over the last three years, my wife and I transformed every square inch of our lawn five hundred square feet into a food. <laughs> and I thought, well, what, like, what do you need me for? <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, you're. Oh, all this done. is a big project. Dude. And then you're. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and then we bought our new house. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So greenhouse uh, geothermal we talked about a lot. Greenhouse yeah. uh, fire pit area that could go anywhere. Um, yeah. I I just like you know. When you're in that moment and you're like having a drinks with friends out near a fire, surround yourself with as much of your food forest and pond areas as possible. Like okay. even just the, the running water in the background while you're, you know, while you're hanging out, having a fire, it, you, like you can make like some serious paradise on your property for sure. Oh, that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And then privacy foliage. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that could be anything. It's yeah, whatever you want. If you want to do the, the, the dead hedge, uh, that's good as well. Anywhere that you really, really want site barrier, I would personally go with cedar just so that you don't, you're, you're totally blocked in, in the, uh, in the winter time. Okay. And then like anywhere that you really, really want, uh, it's like sound barrier as well. Like, I don't know how busy those roads are. They don't look too busy. No. Um, yeah, okay. Like through the forest that's like across from us, there's a, a more major road and you can kind of hear traffic on it. Yeah. Um, but the, on our main roads, yeah. there isn't much. Yeah. 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 So like this top, am I still sharing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this top area here, because there's like, there's no reason to not fully block it out. I would, yeah. I would definitely block that right across and lots of people stop to get the mail there so it's um, it would be nice to block it out yep yeah and you could even like block it out but put like a little fruit stand there or something like that yeah <laughs> yeah that'd be kind of neat uh what about uh any kind of livestock is that something that you guys want or can do in your place well, our neighbors have chickens so we, we kind of want to get everything established first before we we do that raise kids before chickens but <laughs> oh yeah uh, we'll we'll see it's it's definitely possible in the future um once we make it a little bit more private okay yeah because it's not yeah. necessarily legal in ottawa yeah. but i don't think if it, no one hears them they yeah. won't know yeah yeah and then is is this is this your property line here yeah yeah okay so this is your neighbors here yeah, yeah. okay yeah, cause, I mean, you could always run chickens in this back corner, or okay. you could just chicken tractor them right down the food forest. That would be really good. That would like, be nice, once, yeah. Once it gets developed, yeah. you could do like poultry netting and kind of block off an area. They're there one day, they're here the next day, they're here the next day. That would be awesome. Yeah, that could be really good. And then even this, like this area here, like I would go pretty thick here and wide. Okay. With like even like keyhole entries where you could kind of sneak in and then you're surrounded in this little glade inside of a food forest, you okay. know, for just like ease of access, but getting that thicker feel of being inside more of a forest. Yeah. And then fruit or, trees or, kind of along that back line, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like and this, this whole area is the whole North edge. This is great. This is pretty good. And then this is amazing as well. Yeah. Nice. So look, <clears throat> any any full sun loving stuff, great there. We were wondering, like in the ditches, kind of like closer to the road where it, like it comes down, it swales. Um, yeah. Would you recommend planting stuff in those or near those? Because those do get some of the runoff water from the road. Yeah. So like it could be a really good spot to do like an elderberry hedge or something because oh, cool. it's going to get... It's going to get tons of water. So yeah. like I would put probably elderberry right down the whole row. So right down um, the middle of the ditch? Yeah, like right yeah. in the center of the ditch. Nice. Um, another good option would be like cranberry. They like really wet soils as well. And then you could just as you get up of the ditch a little bit, like a uh, better picture of it. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so like yeah, kind of elderberry, I would do it like right down the middle of the ditch. Okay. It's kind of odd that it looks really dry here. So it must, most of this must run this way. Yeah. Although it looks like fairly dry in general. Just with the sandy yeah. soil, it dries out so fast. So fast, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you could you could try elderberries if they struggle. Or when are you, are you going to be planting this year? Yeah. Or, yeah, okay. Yeah, I would try. I would try a few. I wouldn't go crazy and spend too much money just in case this dryness, like the water doesn't even make it that far. Like if it just yeah. drops and literally sinks in. But like as you build stuff in here, as you put the raised beds and as you put down wood chips and that kind of stuff, you'll you'll hold a lot more moisture for longer. So yeah, you'll get a lot more. Uh, yeah, a, a lot better climate down here than what we see here. But then as you go up, that's when you can start kind of weaving in different, like different bushes or, you know, fruit trees. You could put a couple here if you wanted. Um, you could do raised, like this is where you said you wanted to do your raised bed. Yeah, Can I think that might be a good spot. Yeah, it's a really nice area. Yeah. yeah, and then so like when you're doing your raised beds, like you could do raised beds here. And then on the north side of the raised beds, you could put some trees there. Like even just like good spot for, you know, dwarf apple trees and stuff like that. Okay. And then the back near this, uh, near the shed, that's where you could put the big stuff like, uh, you know, like linden or mulberry, um, any kind of nut trees, things that are going to get really large, stick those in front of this wall of uh, spruce and cedar and pine. Yeah. Uh, maybe not cedar. No, maple. I don't put cedar in there. It's no. like maybe a maple. Yeah, I think a mento of a maple in the middle, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that'd be a good spot for like your tallest stuff. And then same with that back edge. And you can look them all up on Plants for Future to get the general height of how, how big things will grow. Uh, but like typically mulberry, mulberry is going to be pretty big. So if you wanted to grow mulberry, that'd be a that'd be the spot for that. Nice. Um, and for, for in terms of soil building, because it is really sandy, we were thinking about... Um, just putting cardboard down and then getting a, a bunch of soil brought in uh, for getting some gardens started this year. Sure. Is there any problem with doing that on top of sand? Like, will it? Uh... No, it should be no. fine. Okay. Yeah. And we got a bunch of uh, wood chips too. So we yeah, might like, keep those. Yeah. For pathways and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just don't, don't, uh, don't skimp on the wood chips. They, they're the thing that's going to really build your fertility like in the long, long term. So the sooner you can get that going, the better. Perfect. We just got three loads on our yard. So yeah. the arborist said he'll bring as many as we can take. So Oh, that's awesome. That yeah. Keeps... Yeah. And a lot of our neighbors, like they don't seem to like to keep the smaller things like the wood chips. So when we went around, like a lot of people were getting rid of them. So we capitalized on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's the best thing. Like I have a friend. Uh, Pierre who says like on one hand he's so 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 super frustrated with the world and how wasteful humanity is but then he says on the second hand he can tap in all these waste streams that yeah. people don't understand how how valuable they are so yeah exactly. I mean you're kind of like not in the middle of suburbia but you're just like on the outskirts of it and you're gonna see a ton of that like people who you'd think would be smarter about that stuff because they got a bit more land but they just are not at all yeah. yeah yeah i was telling colin like the funny thing is they're getting rid of all these like wood chips and like twigs and logs but they're gonna go out and buy mulch like when, <laughs> yeah. when the winter comes or when fall right? comes, but they're gonna go out and buy this stuff when they had it right there yeah. it's so crazy yeah there's yeah it's so funny i see people raking up their leaves and then they go out and buy nitrogen fertilizer <laughs> in the spring yeah so funny yeah, not chip clean leaves. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, the wood chips are hilarious because they have to be, you know, red mulch wood yeah. chips or black mulch wood chips. <laughs> yeah, so funny. Okay. Would you recommend it like digging it a bit deeper than what it currently is to maybe get a bit of a better gradient? Like, I, I wouldn't because all that's going to do is suck water out of your other areas. Okay. You'll, drop, you'll drop the water table. So I would say probably not. And okay. you've got, like, you've got a... a fairly small catchment area but big enough um but it's small enough that i, I don't think that you'll overwhelm that ditch okay. at, like maybe in in the um early spring with the first snow melt if it 
you know, was really cool up until like March or whatever. Um, you might get a little bit of flooding in that ditch, but stuff like elderberry, cranberry, they can handle that. No problem. So yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily dig down to get any kind of more volume because your volume is going to largely just be based off your rainfall and then how much you can hold in, in the top layer before it drains away. Okay. Yeah. Plus, plus it's work. So <laughs> yeah, if, if, yeah, like if it makes sense then do it, but uh, anywhere at all that it doesn't make sense. Like for example, swales, I don't think make any sense on your property because you're already graded and you're graded quite nicely for, you know, you just take advantage of the areas where the water just naturally wants to collect on your land yeah. Um, so that you can soak it up before it leaves your land, then that's great. Also, like for this ditch, the whole perimeter, make sure you put lots of, um, like say on this front side, I would put tons of like really vegetative plants like comfrey, if you can get comfrey, okay. because mm -hmm. they'll, you know, it'll soak up all that extra water and then you can kind of chop it, harvest it and bring it back up into your land and nice. then that way like the nutrients that want to leave your land are being caught in plants and then you harvest the plants and bring it back onto your land does the comfrey like seed well or do you plant seedlings or so i i do the balking four and balking 14 one which is it's sterile from seed it only plants through root propagation like cutting okay um you can get wild comfrey that uh, seeds very well but the problem is is like it'll seed and it'll just drive a tap root down and it'll go so far down in the first year that if you're trying to cut it out because it, you know, shows up in the middle of your lawn for whatever reason, it's hard to keep on top of it. Oh, okay. It'll just keep coming back. Like comfrey to most people, most people hate comfrey because it's, it's so hard to get rid of. Yeah. So I don't necessarily like the ones that are uh, fertile by seed because it, it'll just pop up everywhere. And like you can chop and chop and chop and get rid of it, but um, you know that's just something else that you've got on your plate now that you have to like stay on top of. Yeah. So, um, once you get started, like you guys are close enough, I can dig up some comfrey and, and mail you some if you. If oh, you that'd be awesome. Yeah, and then once you get it established in one area, you can just every fall dig it up, put it like every foot or so all the way down that hedge put uh yeah elderberry and cranberry would be great down that hedge and then up of that um have you done a soil ph test by any chance no we haven't yet no okay so i would i would suggest do that too take a sample from a couple areas around you can get a really ch cheap soil tester from like home depot like five ten bucks oh nice so yeah just just do it that way it doesn't it doesn't have to be super accurate but then you'll know if you can plant like blueberries or anything like that yeah, I think, I think they, they grow all neighbors, the way up there. Yeah, I think from what neighbors have said, it's pretty um, acidic. acidic. Okay. Yeah. Like the only things that grow are, are blueberries and yeah. asparagus, apparently. Okay. And carrots, kind of. Yeah. Well, that's good. Do you guys like those things? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. So blueberries, just like on the northern side, like just on the uphill side of that berm would be a really good place to, to do rows of blueberries. Nice. Um, if you want to do any kind of hazelnuts you kind of want to block them so like maybe a block of them here something like that could be good but uh good. like once you guys get going and you get some initial ideas down you know just uh let me know if you want another touch base and we can okay we can kind of just you know see where you are and throw some ideas around that's perfect yeah i really appreciate this keith we'll um we'll share the progress throughout the summer with you okay good yeah, yeah. and then uh the only other thing i would say is just Yep. figure out where you want to really focus on and kind of pick an area and, and finish the area before okay. you like say go too crazy too deep everywhere so okay. kind of get an idea like i want to fix my raised beds this year get this whole area done yeah. so like get the raised bed set up get the you know dwarf apple trees behind it here blueberry hedge elderberries cranberries comfrey like get your front yard sorted and finished and then, you know, you can, if you have an idea where you want these things, you can even just sheet mulch them this year. So just cut it low, cardboard, maybe some manure if you can get it, and then wood chips on top, go really nice and thick, and then just, you know, let that area just sit okay. for a while and focus on sorting the rest out. And then as you're doing this, the soil's changing in here, and then when you get your trees in, 
even if it's next year or in the fall, then the trees will kind of, you know, take off and uh, awesome. it'll be a little better. But try to, like, first priority is get any of the digging that you need for the geothermal, get all that sorted out where you want that, and then get kind of good idea of the general final layout of where you want stuff sorted out. And then just like, yeah, chip away, but kind of like just work on the first square foot when you get outside of your house and then the next square foot. And yeah. That. 